What's going on guys? Bengal again here, coming back at you with another episode of Lions Franchise. Got the Minnesota Vikings here in week one. Our season opener, we don't play at home until week two against the Atlanta Falcons. And we're going to start with an opening press conference to the media, talking about our key to victory. It's opening day this week and a fresh start for every team around the league, and you'll be facing the Vikings. What's the key to victory? Well, what is it actually? It's probably a dominating offense. Our defense is wishy-washy. If I don't make turnovers, we're probably going to win the game. If I give the football back to the other team routinely, we're probably not going to win the game. And obviously, I think the main focus is the passing game, despite maybe having a rookie quarterback in there, maybe even two. I will tell you guys, my game plan, even if Coach Gene Dangus is not going to say it here, I'll tell you right now. So we're going to hopefully throw for 350 plus yards. Here's my plan. I think we might be looking at a quarterback rotation. Similarly to the way you'll see teams do in college. I'm a Texas Longhorn fan, so I'll liken it to what Texas is probably going to do this year, at least for some time, which is Hudson Card and Casey Thompson, where it's not that they rotate in necessarily, well, listen, I'll just tell you what my game plan is. This video is sponsored by DraftKings, the daily leader in fantasy sports, and they can put you at the center of the action with a shot at a million dollars in prizes every week of the football season. This is a football channel. I know a lot of you guys are into DraftKings, into daily fantasy sports. So many of you guys always ask me, and they're like, hey, what do you think of my fantasy team? And I always say, I don't play fantasy football. I can't keep up with the long season. But if you guys remember my second channel, I have that series Road to Fantasy Millionaire. I'm playing daily fantasy sports. DraftKings is the place to be for it. You don't have to deal with the muss and fuss of managing a lineup for the entire year. You just draft your team on that day. You're ready to go. You're ready to compete for a shot at a bunch of big time prizes. Cool thing about DraftKings, obviously, every player has an assigned salary based off of multiple variables, usually about the points they're projected to put up. You build your team staying under the salary cap. And if you've heard about anything I've mentioned over the past couple seasons, really, with college football, I am a massive Jalen Waddle fan. I think it could be a little bit interesting to get him involved in week one. He's super, super cheap. And Jalen Waddle, someone that is a big play waiting to happen, whether it's on special teams, if he gets a punt or kick return touchdown, but also as a burner over the top and even after the catch as well. Jalen Waddle is someone who's super, super cheap that has potential depending on how much he plays, to put up a lot of points. So if you want a shot at millions of dollars in prizes, you got to go to DraftKings. The link is in the description. You're going to want to use code BENGAL, B-E-N-G-A-L, promo code BENGAL on DraftKings. So play along, make a new account at DraftKings via the link in the description, and remember to use code BENGAL. Clearly with Jared Goff, we have a guy who is a pocket passer. Can run a little bit with 77 speed, but he's really a pocket passer. Doesn't exactly have the biggest arm. That's where Paul Garrison comes in. But also, with Paul Garrison, we can actually run. 83 speed, 90 acceleration, 87 agility, 87 change of direction. Pretty good juke move. Paul Garrison, despite not having great stamina, is a more mobile quarterback. Can throw on the run, as many of you said in the comments, fits my play style a bit more. And then, depending on what happens with Jared Goff, whether he plays well or not, whether Paul Garrison plays well or, well or not. We have Alex Soto. I know he's pretty much the fan favorite so far. Everyone wants to see Alex Soto play. I hear you. I understand it. Like There are arguments to be made either way. Alex Soto is 23 years old, which is two years older than Paul Garrison. He's a little bit better throwing the football right now. Clearly not even near as athletic. Does have 98 stamina. We might end up working him in at some point. It really just depends on what happens with Jared Goff. I have to continue to start him. It'd be nice to get the rookies in at some point, but Jared Goff is probably the best overall quarterback on the team right now. Most well-rounded. Had a lot of interceptions last year, but we obviously drafted Paul Garrison at number two for a reason. He will end up playing significant time, I think, at some point. And then Alex Soto clearly is better than we ever could have dreamed of with the passing attributes. So... He will end up playing a role on this team. Not exactly sure what that's going to be yet. Rashad Reese staying at running back, but we want to see these development traits. We want to have a big time week. I think the two defensive players are kind of being overlooked a lot 
and really even three with Dorian Tompkins, but the two with hidden development. Russ Clemens could end up being a monster for us, and Derek Davidson, at least from what we saw in the preseason, we already know is capable of making plays. He'll be playing in the nickel as well. Nikel Roby Coleman just did not impress, and then Dorian Tompkins is going to be hopefully a really, really big player for us. This is our week one. We have a really, really big game this week against a division rival. That's pretty good. They have a better defense. We have a better offense. We're the same overall. It should be a really, really good game. They drafted, of course, the running back out of Al- uh, Alabama in, what was his name? Lock? Something Lock? Not, Greg Lockhart. For some reason, I was thinking Lock would be the second part of his name. And I'm like, the only thing I can think of is Warlock, and he's not a freaking witch. Dalvin Cook is clearly their main guy. This is why it was kind of surprising to see them actually draft a running back. And I still want to go half pads. I want to manage fatigue differently this year. And we just have to keep our players better for right now. And if that means, you know, not having these guys be injured and not having these guys lose stamina, that's exactly what we're going to do. We got to keep these guys healthy. I think Blitz Counter is going to be pretty good for us. And then, of course, with the team profile, with the development, keeping in Soto and Garrison and Davidson, as I mentioned previously, I think there's a world where we're just not going to get 200 yards rushing. Let's be real about that. Or, you know what we could do is go for big-time double rewards. Let's go 350 yards passing. And we have to, like, hit that goal anyway. But, you know, I think there's a world where the other rookies get a lot of time, whether it's Russ Clemens or Dorian Tompkins and Rashad Reese. I don't really know just yet. I want to see these development traits revealed. So I'm going to try and get these guys some XP. Russ Clemens and really Derek Davidson too. These guys are only 21 years old. Like these guys can really, really be impactful players right away. And for a long time, they're super, super young. So the big story I think is Garrison and Soto. And then even Rashad Reese, I think is everyone's like number three. I'm just a little bit partial to defensive players. I like them a little bit more in general. Big fan of defense, and I don't know, defense really does win championships a lot of the time, but got to have a good offense too, got to develop those guys. I'm rambling a bit. We had a little bit of an injury down there at the bottom. Hopefully it's not too impactful, but it actually is. Tracy Walker, broken finger, going to miss two weeks. That's that's not good. Thankfully, we do have Derek Davidson. He's going to move over to strong safety. Again, he's still going to play in the nickel. And even though he made a big-time play in the preseason, Andrew Soro cannot start at strong safety. It's just not going to happen. Jeff Okuda can't be the backup. What's going to happen is this actually changes things a lot. This changes things a lot. Derek Davidson can no longer be the slot corner. He can't be the slot. Will Harris is going to play free safety. Derek Davids, he's going to have to move to strong safety. The Tracy Walker injury is actually a massive blow to this team. Davidson, of course, keeps his same overall. Actually, you know what we could do in order to keep... Ah, whatever. We'll leave it as is. Also, I do want to thank you guys for so much support on this channel recently. I hit trending twice in two days with Lions franchise on back-to-back days. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. It really, really is. I've hit the trending page three times ever for gaming on YouTube, and all three of them are Lions franchise. So I'm glad you guys are loving the series. It's been a lot of fun to play, despite complaining as I do. It's just, that's going to happen. Also going to do shoot the gaps to boost block shed for defensive tackles by one. We got to use these staff points somewhere. We could save up. Maybe I'll do that in the future, but we're going to use that now. And maybe that's the big time difference in this game against the Minnesota Vikings. Let's come out. Let's get a win. Should be a good game. There's former Giant Dalvin Tomlinson, Kirk Cousins on the field. This should be a good game. We always have good games against the Vikings. Actually, you know what? Am I only saying that because we usually beat them? That's a good game. Winning is good. Rashad Reese, the rookie out of Iowa, back for a turn. Let's make a big time play. And that's actually not that bad of a return, even though it only goes to the 25. I have big expectations for Rashad Reese. Really, this whole rookie class in general. This is an unbelievably good draft class. Just time for these guys to actually, you know, show what they can do in regular season action. And what a spin move by Rashad Reese! 
<laughs> what even was that? His first NFL catch goes for a first down. And our goal is to get Paul Garrison two touchdowns. It's right. It's just probably not going to happen. As here's DeAndre Swift with good blocking to the outside. DeAndre Swift makes a man miss. And Ronnie Harrison eventually recovers, ends up making the tackle. But DeAndre Swift starts things out with a 15-yard gain, about as long as any single run he had last season. Looking to get a bunch of those here in year number two of Lions franchise. Of course, DeAndre Swift going into his third year. Here's the pitch. Decent blocking. Swift, he's going to break a tackle. And he's going to have a 15-yard gain again. Even more. Anthony Barr chasing him down and can't. It's a touchdown for DeAndre Swift. A killer run, allegedly. Although, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that report that DeAndre Swift murdered somebody. It's just some random person calling the police department being like, yeah, uh, DeAndre Swift murdered someone in Philadelphia. And they're like, no, he didn't. And then some verified accounts tweeted out. It's like, this is a report that was circulating. It's like, what are you, crazy? But that's uh, that bad pun. But look at DeAndre Swift go. A huge rush. We saw zero of these last year. Zero. We're up 7 nothing. We saw so few of those runs last year that I wasn't even fully ready to commentate a long run. Was tripping over my word, something I feel like I usually don't do a whole lot of. But this franchise gets me going sometimes. Cousins gonna go down! It's Levi Anzarike. The second year player at a UW showing up huge. He earned the starting job. He's really playing over Lee McNeil because Dorian Tompkins is in that nose tackle spot. Look at Levi Anzarike beating the double team, getting to Kirk Cousins, bring him down. That is just perfect. Third and 13 for Minnesota. Dalvin Cook split to the right side. And Cousins is going to throw outside and complete. Guess who's getting exposed in coverage? If it's any indicator with the preseason, this was going to happen a lot. And Nikel Roby Coleman is beat by KJ Osborne, who is uh, not amazing. I think that's safe to say. First down, fresh set of downs for Minnesota. We're trying to cover a lot, and Cousin just throws it away. Let's play action. I got lost, but Cousins is just not getting rid of the football. Throws it away again. He had some options. He just didn't throw it. Another third down for Minnesota. And they're going to throw sideline. And it's complete for Justin Jefferson. It's going to be a touchdown for the Vikings. What is Jeff Okuda doing? Never made a play on the ball. Pretty much got mossed. Shades of Randy Moss with the Vikings. I don't even know what to say about that. I mean, Jeff Okuda swing and a miss just whiffed on the ball. It really looked like shades of Marcus Williams against the Vikings, except Stefan Diggs with the recipient of that one, if you guys remember that playoff game. Hard to forget, but opposite sideline here, same result. Vikings with a big touchdown. Rumi locked at seven. A lot of stars on the right side of the field, including Panay Sewell. Look at their two backers in Anthony Barr and Eric Kendricks, their safety Harrison Smith. Seems like it's a bad idea to run to this right side. But we're going to try and do it with DeAndre Swift. He was so successful on the first series that we absolutely have to get him involved again. That first possession was incredible because DeAndre Swift was nearly unstoppable. Here's play action from Goff. We're going to throw on this occasion. And we're going to throw sideline deep down the field and swatted away by Ronnie Harrison, the new pickup by the Vikings in the offseason. Thought that was open enough, but Goff just misses him. Third down and six now. New pickup, Ian Thomas is the second tight end in 12 personnel. And we're going to throw short and incomplete. Couldn't get the football out quickly enough. Daniel Hunter got in there pretty quickly. Beat Panay Sewell. And we're going to have to punt. Another new pickup for us here. It's Jamie Gillen. The punter with the long flowing locks is Ife Melifonwu. will wrap up for the tackle there. Vikings will start on the 36 after a short return by Kane Nwangu. Also, look how big number 97 looks in Dorian Tompkins. Like, he looks huge. Time to make some big plays, though, as Alex Anzalone going to wrap up Dalvin Cook. I wanted to blitz Derek Davidson on this, but they're going to move up Will Harris instead. It's a run up the middle. Big hit, and the ball comes loose. It's recovered by the Vikings. Is that Brian O'Neill? Garrett Bradbury. I thought it was a right tackle. 
Is Brian O'Neill playing left tackle now? He's definitely not. Um, wow. First down. I mean, Anthony Walker, he's had some big hits already. Preseason, and now here forcing a Dalvin Cook fumble. Christian Darasaw is going to be their left tackle. That's right. They drafted him. Holy. Huge hit. We don't get the football. I mean, that was a super weird play. As Dalvin Cook's going to be off to the races. A diving. Dorian Tompkins can't bring him down. He, he's huge. He really is. He's six foot, or excuse me, six six, like 300 plus pounds. But it doesn't matter. Cannot get to Dalvin Cook on that one. And it looks like he's going to jump off sides there. Unless that's a false start. Which is exactly what it was. Just a good explosion off the ball. And this one's coming back five yards. That's, we're swarming right there. That's the rookie out of Boise State. Russ Clemens. Second tackle of the game. This one's a huge one. Major tackle for loss. Second and 16. That was just a really, really nice play. Looks like Dorian Tompkins was getting in there as well. But had to go back, and, and Clemens makes a huge play. Second and 16. We're going to try and force the Vikings even further at a field goal range here, if possible. It's going to be play action. And we allow a catch, but not really anything doing there for Minnesota. Third and 15. We're actually going to change this play call here. As Cousins facing all types of pressure. Where is Nikel Roby Coleman going? Threw it away. Going to force a punt. But I feel like that could have been really, really bad. Got a little bit lucky there. It feels good to actually be able to run the football. That is just probably not where I need to take that run. But for the most part, it feels good to be able to run the football. Chris Godwin, as you'll see, slot right. Big pickup for us in the offseason as well. We're going to target him. Underneath, the throw wasn't exactly where I wanted it. Maybe got it out a second too late. But it's a completion nonetheless, setting up a third and short from the 25. First quarter here coming to a bit of a close. I think we're going to put TJ Hawkinson on an out and just run like a levels concept on the right side of the field. Have a block from Hawkinson maybe. Just too crowded on that side of the field. Not a great hot route for me. I just thought we'd have a block out there. And on fourth and inches from the 29, I'm going to punt. Yeah, probably just should have left Hawkinson. But then I, I think I still throw it to Swifty and he doesn't get it. So, I don't know. I Yeah, I still think it was a bad call by me. Got to be better. Oh, what a good cutback from Dalvin Cook. There is a flag, though. I think it's coming back. It's going to be holding on the offense. It's only a gain of like five or six, but it's coming back. Nonetheless, Even it was gain of seven. We have 30 seconds here remaining in the first quarter before we flip sides. First and 15 for Minnesota. It's going to be another run to Dalvin Cook. He makes a man miss. He gets to the outside, breaks another tackle. It's Derek Davidson, of course, a rookie out of Florida State, making the tackle. Maybe saving another huge chunk of yards for Dalvin Cook. This might be the final play of the first quarter. Kirk Cousins under center, and they will not get it off. Not an amazing first quarter from us, but it really wasn't too bad either. As that is going to be covered pretty well by Anthony Walker Jr. But Amir Smith-Marset, another Iowa receiver. Shout out to Rashad Reese. He makes that, that play. Third and one. Going to be a run. Walker, big hit. No fumble this time for Cook, but that is a huge play. Anthony Walker Jr. feels so much more explosive than Jamie Collins. It's ridiculous. It's fourth and three. We're going to force a punt. Huge play. Dalvin Cook is dangerous, and we've pretty much minimized his effect so far in the first half. Still a lot of time to go, but we have been fairly good. As Rashad Reese is a lot of fun to return with. His change of direction is just so unbelievable. I can just zig and zag and, and weasel in and out. I think we're probably going to have some big returns with him at some point. And I'm almost tempted to take a shot down the field. See if he's not covered. And we're going to fumble. Just just waiting too long. Just waiting too long, watching too many things deep down the field. It's a Jared Goofball fumble. And we're giving the ball to Minnesota on the 15-yard line. When they have momentum, it, which, it doesn't even matter, but Dalvin Cook's going to score a 15-yard touchdown. The home team's slightly faster in the red zone, so that's what I was going to say. They're going to be slightly faster down here, but even after a fumble, they didn't have a lot of momentum. They just got it back. Just got it back. It's going to be 14 to 7 Minnesota. And we're making some of those mistakes that I really wanted to avoid. Really wanted to avoid. 
Big thing I want to work on in this season, season two, is like I get that there were not a lot of opportunities last year or two, so I'm going to cut myself a little bit of slack. But I want to focus on not forcing myself to throw the football every time we're down in a game. Because when I see the score, I go, okay, we're down. We got to go in a pass mode. We need yards quick. It's not always like that. Some good blocking right there. And DeAndre Swift fumbles the ball. Chris Godwin recovers, but man, the ball's flying out today. Yeah, the blocking's a lot better. We have guys that are playing well that should be playing well. Frank Ragdow is bullying people at center. Taylor Decker's playing well. Panay Sewell in year two is playing well. We throw that. It's going to be complete to Tyrell Williams. Earned a big contract extension at the end of last season. I feel like these receivers haven't gotten a ton of separation so far. But maybe that changes as the game goes on. Like, they're a really good defense. I didn't mean to throw that. I wanted X. Tyrell Williams can't catch it. Second and four. Wouldn't have been the worst time to run there. Got to get better at who we throw to. That's open. Hawkinson. First down and his legs are taken out from under him. Did a really good job to hold on. Haven't really stretched the field much, and whenever I feel like I've tried to, things have not been open. This is a pretty good Vikings defense, so this might not be the case the entire year. So we're going to check down a Swifty. And I don't know if he caught it or not. He did catch it. It's tough when it goes from the 48 to the 48, and it's a close play like that. I'm like, did he get it, and we're just on the other side of the 50? Or did he drop it? What's going on here? I guess the clock would have stopped. Third and three. This is certainly shaping up to be the best game of DeAndre Swift's career. I think we're absolutely in four-down territory here, so I'm really comfortable running the football. And the, the spin back made sure we didn't get it. We should have just fallen forward in that spot. I tried to get greedy, tried to get more. It's going to be fourth and inches. And as I said, true to my word, we're going to run the football. You think I'm punting from the Minnesota 42? You're out of your mind. And there goes DeAndre Swift. There's a flag. You, I cannot believe this is coming back on fourth and inches. I cannot believe it. Oh. Panay Sewell with the holding. And guess what? Now we have to punt on fourth and ten. I mean, this is ridiculous. And it, it's going to come back to the third down where I tried to spin and get greedy knowing it was four down territory. And guess what? It comes back to bite us because we would have probably had a first down if I didn't get greedy and just... Tried to fall forward. Big hold when we would have gotten the first down anyway. And we're forced to give the football back to Minnesota, who really, they haven't been great, but they haven't been bad either. It's going to be a quick throw outside. Davidson couldn't wrap up. Thankfully, Nikel Roby Coleman's there for the tackle on Irv Smith. It's a run. It is a run. Dalvin Cook with the attempted cutback, but Alex Anzalone's right there. Had some help. Deshaun Hand gave him a hand. Alex Anzalone, and I think Romeo Aquara was the other one. It's, we're running too far away from that, Davidson. We got to stay on that. Like, I get that he's in a deep zone, but there's no threat over the top there. I feel like he just needs to stay stickier with the only receiver in the area. I get that he's in a deep zone. Like, that's forgivable. Because I need to get out to that. Jeez. Dalvin Cook not blocking on that one. Should take us to the two-minute warning. Quick slant, and whoa, what a weird play there. I saw a superstar on the field. Amani Oruwariye, his superstar development. That's right. Second and five. As we are approaching the end of the second quarter, and I just don't belong in man coverage against someone who's this shifty with the crazy change in direction like Dalvin Cook. It's just too tough. I mean, the CPU probably gets cooked in that spot as well. But man, that is a tough, tough task to stay in man coverage on Dalvin Cook. Or, ah, or Warrior, just not close. Not close on that. I mean, he was in a deep zone though, so it's understandable to get beat on a comeback like that. Just got to play a little bit better. He's got to play a little bit better. Cousins all day. Back of the end zone throwing. Touchdown? Holy cow. Irv Smith Jr. with the TD. Laser beam throw from Kirk Cousins. I mean, that was actually unbelievable. I thought I was going to get there with Anthony Walker Jr. I need to see a replay. Where was Derek Davidson on this? Just running into the tunnel. 
I mean, he was all over 15. He was all over 15. But, uh, holy cow. Great throw. Perfect throw. 21-7 Minnesota. We have a minute and a half to score before the half. It's doable. It's doable. Might have to get a little bit more aggressive than we've been so far in the rest of the game. Oh, our screen is shaking here. Away team has trouble catching. That annoys me even reading that. Because we're going to see some wide open drops, and I'm going to freak out. We've got a minute to score. We cannot afford drops here. We can't afford drops. We need yards when we can get them. We do have our timeouts. I'm rolling out incessantly, but Rashad Reese is wide open. I thought about making a miss in space with Rashad Reese. Probably should have with three timeouts. It's a big catch by the rookie. But nevertheless, I feel like I need to try and get aggressive there and make him miss. Do we have that? Tyrell Williams sideline. Great awareness of the boundary. Tyrell Williams gets his feet inbounds. What a throw from Jared Goff. And we're on the 11-yard line. We've got a real opportunity to score. We got down the field really quickly. And look at DeAndre Swift. Look at DeAndre Swift go. He's down to the four. Try and run the football again. 20 seconds remain. DeAndre Swift. He's going to be just short. I, I can't juke in that spot. I just have to lower the shoulder and have DeAndre Swift plow through him. Because we have that there if I do that, I think. First and goal, two timeouts. We're going to run the football. Trust DeAndre. Trust DeAndre. Touchdown, DeAndre Swift. I didn't say that enough last year. I hope to be saying it a lot more in 2022. Big TD. We bring it back to within a touchdown. 14 seconds remain. Will likely bring us into the second half. We played a decent half. Could have been better. I feel like it wasn't too bad, though. Just a couple bad things. Fumble not going our way. Taking this, the uh, air out of DeAndre Swift sails a little bit, even though we did end up recovering that fumble. And then, of course, the hold from Panay Sewell, where we would have had the first down going into Minnesota territory, forced to punt. Just, uh, you know, I guess that's really the big thing other than the fumble that we recovered. Yeah, we just need to be, uh, need to be better. You know, Deshaun Hand, what is that? I was using Deshaun Hand. He got buried into the ground and like the freaking Undertaker, rose from the grave to lift up Delvin Cook and spear him. Unbelievable. That's the first half. And we have to kick off to the Vikings as well. Ugh. They've got a really good opportunity to make this a two-score game again. So that's unfortunate. Kirk Cousins has all day. He's going deep. Nearly complete. We need to get after the quarterback. We need to get pressure in there. We drafted Russ Clemens at number, what, 16 overall for a reason. Get after Kirk Cousins. And we can't wrap up Dalvin Cook. Derek Davis in good tackle. Come back, make a play. Derek Davidson continues to be all around the football as Amani Uruwari allows his second catch of the game, I believe. I'm going to try and dial up the pressure. I think that's going to be the difference in the game. If we can force the football out earlier, I think Kirk Cousins is going to make some mistakes. But right now, he's got all day, and then Dalvin Cook is making some guys miss. We got to be better. Walker. Woo! I was living in the backfield. Looks like Dorian Tompkins made the tackle there. You see our draft class. I mean, we had six picks inside the top three rounds. You know, inside the top, like, two rounds. Inside the top 60, 69 picks. Nice. Five picks inside the top 40. Like, we invested heavily through the draft. We need these guys to play well. Second and nine. Perfect time to dial up some heat. I'm in man coverage on Adam Thielen. That's probably a bad idea, but I'm all over it. Throw away from Kirk Cousins. Lobbing it up. Davidson with an interception. 
The rookie makes a huge play here. We're getting the football back. No real opportunity for a return, but look at Derek Davidson in his first NFL game. We saw him in the preseason forcing a turnover and now playing over the top again. That's maybe where he's going to make his living. Just lobbing it up, and you can't do that. Teams, I think, are going to find that out very quickly that you cannot throw it deep with Derek Davidson out there. Jared Goff going to take the field. We need a big-time second half, Jared. Need a big-time second half. Touchdown ties the game. Let's get it going. Also, it looks like Garrison's uh, passing touchdowns are being tracked as Jared Goff's right now. So that's something. Also, I think I just designed a killer play. Hawkinson on the wheel. Williams is going to sit down. Reese on the drag. Swift just sitting down as well. Quick throw. Look at DeAndre Swift. The killer play of dreams. DeAndre Swift off to the races. Swift eventually tracked down by the hitman. But down to the 12 is DeAndre Swift after a huge gain. They sent a blitz. I didn't really anticipate making a read that quickly. Maybe not even the right one. But guess what? It worked out. Yeah, we threw big time into traffic there. Thankfully, it was man coverage. Ronnie Harrison was following Rashad Reese. But, man, that could have been really, really bad. But it wasn't. It was really, really good. First and 10 from the 12. We're going to try and fit that in there. TJ Hawkinson drops a touchdown. Oh, my God, TJ. That's super bad. Also, oh, it, it get Garrison two-plus passing touchdowns. It's one of three right now. So it's just all the way broken. We're rolling out. Somebody make a play. Then I threw an interception. Ah, Jesus. It's it's a stupid, stupid, stupid play. It's all on me. I completely understand that. Oh, my God, dude. It's just brain dead. I'll tell you what I thought was going to happen. So, sit in the pocket. Obviously, I'm seeing the shed there. So, I'm like, we got to roll out or else I'm going to get sacked. We roll out. I'm looking at Hawkinson. I see Swift running down. I didn't think Eric Kendricks was going to follow him. I'll be honest. At this point, I thought Swift was going to cut in front of him. Like right here. You're going to see when I try to throw. Like I thought he was going to cut in front of him. Kendricks just, just covered the route perfectly. Just completely on me. I didn't think that was going to happen. So uh, really unfortunate turnover. That is uh, not good. So the Derek Davidson interception ends up not accounting to anything. I mean, ah, oh, jeez. I, I I, really wish I could take that back. Almost an interception by Kirk Cousins again. Putting pressure on him is, is forcing these bad throws. We're going to keep doing it. But, jeez, dude, I, 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 I'm devastated at that interception. Terrible. As Davidson is just lost. Lost. Tries to save a touchdown. He ends up making the tackle, but he didn't wrap up the first time. Ah, jeez. I think we just literally threw the game away with Jared Goff. We just got bulldozed. Good lord. I'll tell you what, though. We need a jump start. We need a jump start. We're going to the depth chart. We're making a change. Paul Garrison is in a QB. Play action. Oh my goodness, the pressure forced to duck out of Kirk Cousins. I'm not really sure who got in there. We'll take another look at it. We blitzed a ton, play action, and Zaloni. Oh, that would have been so nice if we could have had a play on that football. Two guys in the area, Oruwarie and Harris. Just not close enough. We can force these guys out of field goal range, though. Let's dial up the heat. Let's dial up the heat. Quick throw and complete to Jefferson. Anzalone, it's going to be a run. Oh, what a play. Deshaun Hand and Romeo Aquara. Aquara ended up making the tackle. I think Hand was really holding the blocks there. Fourth and four. Minnesota probably will convert, although the first extra point wobbled a bit. So I guess I don't know that this is a gimme. That was right down the middle. Maybe it was. Paul Garrison, the number two overall pick in the 2022 NFL draft, is in for the first time. And that's going to be mossed by Tyrell Williams. I can tell you, it's an illegal man downfield. It was an RPO. I got the ball out way too late. Uh, I didn't like the run. Didn't like the pass. RPOs are tough. I know it's crazy that I just went out of bounds like that, but I knew what the call was. I, I knew, like, and even if it wasn't, it was holding. 
But, you know, I knew what I did. I knew what I did. Here's Chris Godwin. Should look to get him involved a little bit more as Paul Garrison matches his jersey number. First NFL pass is good for 11 yards. Second and four. Trying to run the ball here to DeAndre Swift. He's been good this game. He's going to be close to the first on that one. We're going to get creative here. Third and one. It's a jet sweep. Pitch. Reese fumbles out of bounds. Oh, Why are we getting cute in that spot? I'll tell you. We're getting cute in that spot to try and do something to get the first down. A minute and nine seconds remain in the third quarter. We're on the 33. I have to punt. Probably shouldn't try and get cute there. But I thought it was going to be an effective play. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called it. That's, I, that just can't be open. A slant down the field cannot be that open. Oh, my goodness, dude. Just a huge play. KJ Osborne. Anzalone's got a bruised elbow. Jelani Tavai is going to come in. That's, it's another slant to KJ Osborne, dude. They can't keep getting away with this. I'm surprised they're not running the ball in this spot. Trying to take everything away. I mean, how long are we really supposed to stick there? A huge hit by Davidson on the goal line. KJ Osborne does not fumble. To run, and it's going to be a touchdown. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. It's going to be 31 to 14. I honestly think the biggest thing in this game, obviously not being able to stop Minnesota has been tough. The biggest thing in this game for me is we have had multiple third and shorts and not converted. I'm to blame. I really am. But man, it's frustrating. We've had opportunities and multiple times on third and short, we get nothing. And then for one reason or another, we have the football back on fourth down. We lob that up, make a play. Hawk can't do it. Thought he was going to get separation. I didn't think Shannon Sullivan. Is that even Shannon Sullivan? I'm not sure that it is. Um, I thought Sullivan was going to was going to stay like down in the flat. Clearly, it didn't happen. I don't know where to go with the football here. Swift drops it. Third and ten. We need somebody to make a play. Somebody get open inside. TJ Hawkinson. Oh, it's a big catch. It's a big catch by Hawk. We need this. Let's speed up. Let's make some plays. We need plays now. We need big plays now. I'm streaking Rashad Reese. We're going to make it happen. Can we go deep here? Garrison. End zone for the rookie. That ball is caught. Touchdown, Rashad Reese. What a ball from the rookie, Paul Garrison. That was literally dropped in the bucket from midfield. Paul Garrison dropping back. Reese just running a straight streak from the 45 all the way to the back of the end zone. A 60-yard in-air throw plus 65 unbelievable 67 yards in the air for Paul Garrison oh my god what a throw what a catch the rookie connection is real and we brought it within 10 still time in this game we can make a comeback what a throw from Paul Garrison oh we can't we can't have that Will Harris just totally not in the right spot try to go for the football with Davidson Big run for Dalvin Cook. Will Harris is just playing badly. I'm not entirely shocked, but he wasn't even close to where he needed to be. Try, I, I, we can't stay on that. None of my linebackers can run across the field like that. I feel like I'm sticking perfectly on KJ Osborne there, and we're just lagging behind. It's brutal, dude. It is brutal. Is KJ Osborne the best player in the league? Like, what's happening? What is actually happening? We can't allow a touchdown here. Field goal, honestly fine. We cannot allow a touchdown. He has all day. He has all day 
We just can't stay in coverage for that long. How do you expect us to stay in coverage for 10 seconds? We're getting no pressure. We, we rush three. I guess it's more forgivable on that. But man, it's been the entire game. It's been the entire game. We need to stop. Turnover would be ideal. And down goes Cousins, finally. It's Deshaun Hand who gets half a sack. We were going to force a field goal try again. A field goal is the most we could allow here to actually stay in the game. Kick is up, down the middle, just about. Down by 14. Down by 13, even. Two touchdowns, though, so it makes the same. And we're going to fumble. Oh, my goodness. Recovered by Frank Rag now. I tried to get the football out. The slants for the Vikings get open every play. For me, no. No. They don't. <laughs> they don't get open. So, I mean, we're trying to make anything happen. Tell you what. We're going to go underneath there. Wow, Reese almost made a big-time play, but he dropped it. Um, third and 22. I really want to lean on Chris Godwin more. He's just not getting open. At least, not that I've seen. And I, I certainly could have missed him a few times. I gather that. But I just haven't seen him really get open. We fit that in there. Need a big catch from Hawk and we got it. That's huge. That's massive. We just need guys to win deep. It's going to be the easiest way to go down the field. Or at least the quickest. Because we need points right now. Rolling out. Somebody's got to get open. Swift step out of bounds. Like, you're kidding me. Can't do that. Rolling out with Garrison. You got to be faster. Take him up the field. Good block. Vanilla Vic. Merch link in the description. <laughs> Paul Garrison with a 36-yard run. Gets out of bounds. Did I mention the Teespring merch for Vanilla Vic? You can find that down below. Holy cow. That's why you start Paul Garrison. Right there. That's why. 36-yard run. It's just not happening. On the run. End zone. TJ Hawkinson touchdown. We're starting to roll out. And then I saw Hawkinson as the safety came down. I think maybe to cover the run. TJ Hawkins, you just open over the top. What a throw. A little bit of wobble to it. But guess what? It got there, and it got there accu accurately. TJ Hawkinson barely gets two feet down, by the way, but scores a big-time touchdown. Paul Garrison, his second passing touchdown of the game. Don't bother reviewing it. I mean, he has been the spark plug. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly has been. Tell me I didn't miss this. Okay. 34-28. There's still time. We have three timeouts as well. We need to stop. And we really haven't been able to get many. We need to stop. They are chewing clock. Let me tell you. Chewing something else. Big hit, Anthony Walker. I'm going to call a timeout. I want to have another play before the two-minute warning. This is just something I like doing. Third and five. I just, oh man, I don't like this. They're running out of empty. We're going to get crushed here. We're going to get crushed. They're going deep down the field. Davidson, the rookie, takes it away. Out of bounds. But doesn't allow a first down. Derek Davidson, you can't throw on him. He's too fast. What a play. I mean, we've seen Jeff Okuda get mossed. <laughs> Thankfully, that didn't happen here. A touchdown and an extra point puts us over the top. Oh. Broken tackle by Rashad Reese. We're running, the, we're running the wrong way. Trying to make something big happen. And DeAndre Swift obviously hasn't been a big part of our game plan in the second half. We've kind of let Paul Garrison take over. But we've got time. We need to have this be the final possession. We need Paul Garrison to take over. No hit six. We need DeAndre Swift to play well. Where are we in terms of passing yards, by the way? Because that's also important. <laughs> Even though the win is as well, I, I get that. Passing yards, 294. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Running the ball would be nice, but also, also, as I, we're going to get sacked there. Oh, Lord, on second and two. I wanted the uh, corner route so badly. 
and it's going to kill us. It is going to kill us. And we're getting sacked again. Somebody turn around and get the football. Oh my goodness, I need to call a timeout. What is that, dude? They got in the backfield so quickly. They ran mid blitz. We just didn't have the blockers. Oh my god. I do like that play, though. We're just going to keep in DeAndre Swift to block. Something's got to get open here. They're going to blitz again. I got to throw it up. Chris Godwin, make a play. It's intercepted. I just let the CPU do it. Jeez. Uh, it was a rack catch, and he never obviously went for the football. That's the way this game ends. Ugh, man, big pressure by the Vikings. Big pressure when we, uh, when we needed to go further down the field. Brutal. Thought Chris Godwin had a step, really. It's really good coverage. We're going to lose. Man, I thought this team played really, really well in spurts today. Just didn't do enough. Didn't convert what we needed to on third and short. Obviously, a couple uh, unfortunate interceptions. One at the end of the game there. We kind of had to take a chance at Chris Godwin, I think. And, uh, of course, the other... Just a brain-dead decision with Jared Goff. But other than that, I only th I threw two. I say only two. One of them was a desperation pick. The other one was just stupid. So I really, I think, only made one brain-dead interception this game. Which is, if you've watched season one, a major improvement for me. A major improvement. It's tough to start out 0-1-1. I think it was a good game. We just, uh... We didn't play perfect enough to get the job done. And... We didn't pass for 350 yards, but I, I think I think Paul Garrison played quite well. Completion percentage wasn't there, but you know quarterback rating was significantly better than Jared Goff. Did have the desperation pick at the end, two touchdowns though. I mean, we had a running game for once, eight yards per carry for DeAndre Swift, two touchdowns. That was incredible. Big gain from Paul Garrison as well. KJ Osborne, I mean. This is why we lost the game right here. I mean, we couldn't stop any of these receivers. I was That was a huge part of it. You know, Rashad Reese, huge TD down the field. TJ Hawkinson, a couple of huge catches. Chris Godwin, I just felt like he wasn't open whenever I looked his way the entire game. Anthony Walker had 14 tackles, two for loss, half a sack. <laughs> Derek Davidson had 10 tackles. An interception as well, which was a lone one for our team. Levi Anzarike had the sack. Sean Han and Anthony Walker, of course. Combined for the other one, also had a forced fumble, recovered by Minnesota. That was a really good game. We just, unfortunately, were playing catch-up for the entire game, pretty much. It was Chandon Sullivan, by the way. It was Chandon Sullivan. Just stuck to Chris Godwin. Unbelievable. Um, interesting. So, it says we failed getting Garrison two passing touchdowns. He had two passing touchdowns. It says we got 350 yards passing. I think we were just shy of that. A little confused. DeAndre Swift has an upgrade. We are going to do elusive back. I would like for him to get plus one to break tackle at some point. Awareness and carrying. Ugh. I mean, he fumbled, so maybe carrying isn't the worst thing in the world. All right, rookie quarterback one. Tough game all around as you didn't get the win and Paul Garrison didn't have the game you hoped for. I feel like he did. Paul Garrison, he only had 11 attempts. I thought... I thought he was quite impressive. So... A little bit surprised about that. Again, I... Weird glitch, I think. And then, of course, with the, uh... The staff here. Yeah, Chris Godwin, uh... Says it falls on us. I He just didn't get open, I feel like. Am I wrong to say that? I feel like he didn't get open. I'm sure I missed him a lot of times. I'm sure I did. It's just the nature of the game. I'll miss players open on the field. Can't see everything. But man, I feel like he didn't get open. Week two against the Falcons. I really think it should be a win. We are better than them in every facet of the game. We should be better than them. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. And um, I think I'll leave you with this. Paul Garrison has been named the starter. I will see you in week two. Take it easy.
it at the park, Ben Bones. See me high step to the end zone. My life like a game, Nintendo. Playing with the best, let them know. Get off the track, the train's coming through. Yeah. Promise you get in my way, then you best believe I'ma just run over you. Yeah, yeah. I'ma turn taking it back to the house. Defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud.